Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to today's program. On a previous episode, we had my boy Jarvis on the program. And after we got done with that episode, Jarvis said, I got to bring my wife on the show to tell the whole story. So here we are. Introduce yourself and let's get started. Hey, my name is Devin. I am part owner of Kingdom Blonde Care and Jarvis Milliner is my husband and I'm the wife. So if, if y'all ain't hear the podcast before, man, I'm Jarvis uh, from Kingdom Lawn Care, man. We out South Mississippi. We enjoy cutting grass and doing a little landscape. And my wife, she she come in the field a little bit, man, when she feel like hanging with me. Not really to come work, but when she feel like hanging with me, spending time with me, she'll come out and help me time to time. So that's who we are, man. So we excited to be here, ready to get into it, man. And I think my wife got a few things she want to say, you know, kind of like her point of view of how it was being a wife of somebody that's in uh, lawn care full time, or even when I was transitioning from my full time job into landscaping and lawn care full time. So we're going to get in it, man, and see how it's going to go. Yeah. Take it away, Devin. Okay. So like I said, I'm Devin. Me and Jarvis actually, well, we got married straight out of high. I got married straight out of high school. So I was 18 after I graduated in May. I was 18, fresh out of high school and married the love of my life. Now, everything at that time, it was new to us. Marriage was new. Living with each other was new. Uh, his career, everything was just new. So we didn't have any experience in anything not really knowing each other or anything like that so to fast forward he ended up going to the shipyard and he was also working part-time on his business and we ended up having our first child our little girl kennedy and from then i can kind of say it was a bumpy road it was a rocky world it was just kind of down here from there paul if i start to get teary out i start to cry just just don't hey, just, we, we've had right. grown we've had grown men cry on this show. So <laughs> okay, let them fly. Well, I'm in the clear then. Okay, so after I can remember a time I had we had our first our first child and Jarvis, he was just so he's bullheaded and if he set his mind to do something, he's going to do it. And I remember just getting out the hospital and he was like, I gotta go cut grass. And at that time, it was just like, we just had a baby. Everything is new. Like, why you just can't sit home and stay home with us? And it was just like, he just like, I got to go get the money. I got to I gotta get my business off the ground. I can't stay at the shipyard. I can't stay at the shipyard forever. And I'm just thinking like, well, okay, that's kind of understandable. He can, he got to make a way for his family. And so after that, it was just continue on just, constantly work he would work 12 hours at ingles 12 hours to get up from six and sometimes get off at six and then after he would work 12 hours at ingles he would come home he would kiss me hey babe how you doing get him something to eat and he'll run right back out the door and so it seemed like i seen my husband for split seconds at a time and at that time like i said everything was new and i started to feel distant from my husband because it was always work, 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 work. And part of that was Ingles took majority of his time away from the house and away from his family. And he was building his, on the side, he was building his business on the side, part time. And like I said, it was just rough. So we had a couple of bumps. We bumped heads plenty of times because he's never home. And I always used to tell him, let's plan something. And I always used to say, I got to plan something around your schedule. When can you put my name down on the calendar for you to spend time with your family? It was things like that. And it was causing a lot of confusion. It was causing a lot of, I can't even say it, but we was bumping heads a lot. And I remember a time where me and him got into it and I can't even just re just recall the whole situation, but I remember when he came home one night and it was late, not late at night. It was probably around like seven or eight o'clock and he came home and I remember me and him getting into it and he was like, uh, you just don't understand how I'm trying to build this business for me and my family. 
And at that time, I didn't understand because I was being selfish and I'm pretty sure it was selfishness on his part also. But he looked me dead in my face and said, I'm doing this for y'all. And and he said that he cried, you know, because I'm at home crying with a new baby and he's outside of work crying, outside of his house crying. And so, Paul, it was difficult, especially with us being so young and especially with us just getting into this new lifestyle of, of everything that he worked hard for. I thank God for him because if it wasn't for God, he wouldn't be in the situation that we are in now. And I'm so grateful that coming from a wife point of view and being in this industry with a business, a, a working, a hard working husband, a dedicated husband, he was dedicated to his business. He was determined to get his business off the ground so he can quit his job full time and so he can do he, do what he loves also full time. And so coming from my point of view, I feel like, like I said earlier, it was selfishness on my part and selfishness on his part because at that time he wasn't including me in any of his direction of life. You know, I call him the silent assassin. So when, it, when he's silent, I really don't know what's going to happen next. But he would come to me and say, this is, how, this, this is what we're going to do. This is what I'm going to do. And he would set a set time or a set schedule on what he's going to do. And as my role as a wife, I just had to go along with it. You know, and it been sometimes where he would come from cutting grass late at night, Paul. I would, I would start cooking dinner if he would tell me that he will come. If I would ask him, what time would you be able, what time would you be done cutting grass? He would like 7, 7.30, 8 o'clock. And around that time, 7.30, if he get done at 8, 7.30, I'm in the kitchen cooking. Mind you, I have, now we have my little boy, which is Jarvis Jr. And now for the moms and for the dads that's out there listening, please don't judge me. But I would kind of starve my kids out from that time. Just to make them eat later. Yeah, just to make them eat later so we can eat as a family. And you know, for them constantly saying, mommy, I'm hungry, or mommy, can I get a snack? So they were raised our snack cabinet, you know, so until dinner get ready so we can eat as a family, you know, God put us here as a family and we gonna stay as a family, we gonna eat as a family. And like I said, Paul, it was difficult. It was, it was difficult. A lot of tears, a lot of fights. A lot, of a, a lot of confusion. I remember one time that it it got so bad because now I felt like the side chick, which is he putting his, I, I always say he put his first love first, which is cutting grass. And I felt like the side piece and, and cutting grass was his main priority. And it got so bad one time that we ended up going to the courthouse. We literally went to the courthouse, stood outside, the courthouse and debated on would we walk in to get a divorce because it was it was serious at that time it was hard but i'm so glad that that the sacrifices he made and him including me and him including my feelings and what even though i can have a million things planned for his business see his business he was now he would ask me babe what you think about this or babe what should we do he's now including me so for the ones that's out there struggling within their marriage because their husband or their spouse is trying to build a platform for them so he won't have to work so much all i can say is trust the process trust that he's going to make a way that seems to be no way that he would be able to put y'all put y'all in a position where it won't have to be no more fights. It won't have to be any more arguing. It won't have to be no more fussing. It won't have to be any more animosity. It, it was sometimes he walk in the house and we would barely speak to each other. Cause nine times out of 10, he was, he'll come home, he'll eat, he'll take a shower, he would play with the kids and go to, go to sleep. It was no quality time with me around that time it was just work 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 and 
like I said, it was it was hard. It was it was a difficult road, but now we're on a road to recovery. <laughs> And now we are, we are on the upside of it. So my advice would be if any women out there or y'all marry y'all spouse, y'all husband is working, I'm talking about working, working, just stay with them, stick with them, it, be there for each other. Ask them what can you do for their business? And also vice versa, the spouse, the husband that's asked, what was, that's what I was gonna say. okay, ask what can, what can he do to and help? Paul. Paul, if I can, if I can ask a, a question, uh, ask her a question or two. My main thing from this podcast right here that we that we doing right now that all the listeners will get out of this one, Paul. It's a lot of people that's going through, you know, with they with their spouse because they working so much. You know, they they in that transition stage, trying to leave that full time job and do lawn care full time, which is a great thing. But sometimes us as men, you know, we uh we get stuck in our own ways or we'll see what we trying to do and that woman to get real emotional and she'll she'll not understand what we're trying to do and we'll have to include them because it wasn't always that I included her. It was a time like I I, I don't care what you say, I'm finna work, you know, regardless of what you're thinking about it, like. I got to I got to build this business, you know, to take care of my family. I'm trying to get out the shipyard. I'm trying to, you know, do this landscaping full time. We can make more money. We can do this. We can do that. I can have more time. Here. I was saying that stuff, but I wasn't taking the proper steps to find out how I can make it better. So for the listeners, if it's in it, like I want them to really be encouraged from this podcast on how to include their wives to stop for a second, you know, cause as men, we, we, we not emotional like women are. So we kind of don't pay a whole lot of attention to our feelings, but that woman do. So what I want to ask you, baby, is, uh, is like, what was it that I didn't do that you felt like I should have done in, in the beginning stage when I was working a whole lot? You know what I'm saying? When I was working at the shipyard, coming home and then going like loading the trailer up and going right back out there, what was it that I could have done that I didn't do? I would say communication. Communication is everything in a relationship. And at that time, it was no communication. Like he said, it was like, it doesn't matter what I say, he's going to do what he going to do regardless. So at that time, if he would have communicated with me and said, babe, if he would have set me down and made me get an understanding on how his mind works or, or what his mind is thinking at the time, I feel like things would have went a little smooth. But at that time, it was just like, I'm doing like, like I said, I called him a silent assassin. Whatever he think, whatever he um thinking, he's going to do it without including me. And if he would have included me more, even if he would have asked me, babe, I'm getting new uniform shirts. What colors do you think will look good for the company? You know, anything. Any, women love small details. Women love small things. It's not the big things that make a woman just say, ooh, it's the small thing. So if he would have included me and said, babe, I really want your input. I want the woman's touch on this specific color. What color would you, would, uh, would you like for the company to be? Anything or take me. If he would have took me lawnmower shopping, you know, take me to <laughs> take me to a lawnmower store. Let me see you buy that BR eight hundred. You know, let me see you buy that weed eater. Let me let me see it. You know, if he would have included me in any of those things, I would have been like a little girl in a candy store. Like he's really including me. He's really thinking about me. He's really thinking about my feelings, and he's actually thinking about what what I think. And that would have played a big part it would have it, it so, would have changed a lot of stuff as men god put us here to provide ain't no doubt about it god put us here to provide and anybody that's out there you know cutting yards and <laughs> in the heat you know running a trim all day or throwing mulch or pulling weed especially pulling weeds but whatever it is we know that you want to provide for your family you know so ain't no question about that but we can't get caught up on us providing for our families and, and let that make us overlook 
how that woman is really feeling. Remember, she's emotional. Remember that, like she just said, that 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 small stuff that don't matter to us, it matters to them. Like she used to always tell me, I'd be like, hey, that stuff don't even matter. What you used to say to you, but it matters to me. Matters what to she me. always used to tell me. So, you know, in a and that's in a relationship, period. This ain't just lawn care, but this is in, in your marriage, period, man. We have to, you know, get out of out of our own uh, ways of how we see and stuff and make sure we include that woman, make sure we, you know, checking up on her, see how she doing. And I think that was a big turning point in me in that transitioning stage and getting her on board because I tried to help her do my paperwork you know, fill out my calendar, you know, the different stuff like that. Try to just include her and try to get her involved and, you know, take out there in the field. But it really wasn't until after I left my full-time job when you came and helped me in the field or whatever. But I would just say include her every way possible, any little way you can, and just don't overlook the details. And I, I, I really want this podcast to be, you know, something special, man, to motivate the guys, man, in the industry and in the lawn care community to include their wives because I don't want nobody, you know, relationship to fail, you know, all because we seen I'm providing. You can't take that I'm providing. You don't like the fact that I'm providing. You complaining because I'm providing. And because I used to work like I did, like I mentioned on the last podcast, because I worked so much, I made that commitment and that promise that I'm not going to work like that again. You know, so do I work like that now? No. I don't work like that no more. Man, that, that's some of the main points that I would say uh, out, of, out of that. And from her point of view, you know, like she said, you know, she just wanted to be included. And I think that's the main thing. And, you know, they want to be, they want to know what's going on in the business also. So, How old is uh, Kennedy and Jarvis Jr. now? Eight and six. Kennedy, Kennedy is uh, eight. eight. Jarvis Jr., my, my baby, well, my oldest boy, he's six. And we starting football in two weeks. So maybe by the time this podcast come out, I'll be out there, man, coaching flag football again. But we got a, another baby boy. His name is Jaira. And uh, he's six months. So Oh, wow. So now you have three kids. What was the storyline, just to give context to this, when you were standing out outside of the courtyard contemplating going in there? How old were they then? How long ago I was I think that? we only had Kennedy back then. Oh, we had JR too. No, we didn't have JR back then. Okay. Kennedy probably was like four? No. No, she had to be like one. Baby, we talking about this was back. When we went to the courthouse, I think my baby girl, she was like one years old. So and at this time, oh, at, I was just going to say, like, at this time, it was more. And see, this is another thing. It wasn't even the fact that I was just working so much. It was like the pressure that was on our marriage was coming from different things. As far as like we that, that was around the time we had almost lost the house. We had almost lost our house. And uh, I, I had kind of stopped cutting grass for a little bit. At one point, I still had a few clients, but I was I, I would just borrow my, my dad's lawnmower and I'd go, you know, cut a few. So I really wasn't doing it no more. When I went from one shipyard to another, we almost lost the house. And that's when I went out and I, I bought a, uh, another zero turn. But like we was falling behind and see this is normal life stuff that people just don't talk about that like so many people go through and it's a normal thing but if we talk about it and normalize it people won't struggle so bad or be so ashamed when they are going through it because we literally we literally had to call and borrow money my good friend mike gill he loaned us all uh, 500 dollars a week because they told us they they called and they told us if y'all don't have thirty five hundred dollars tomorrow no 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 it was that day they said if y'all don't have thirty five hundred dollars by five o'clock today when they close they putting a letter on on our house tomorrow so we was we was in the process of buying a house we still in that same house now about uh yeah. eight years later but he he helped us out and he he you know helped us get that paid for and that's when i went back to cutting grass i went and financed me a uh lawnmower it wasn't the x mark sorry paul sorry jarvis i i hate that it wasn't the x mark but 
I went and financed the lawnmower and, and then, you know, I was trying to come back around because I was like, I know how to make some extra money. So I'm going to go back to what I what I always done, cutting grass. And see, it, it wasn't just the pressure of, oh, he working a lot. Oh, he doing this. Oh, he not include me. But it was like financial play a big part financially because I'm going to be honest. Like now that we are, we don't have a whole lot of money. I, I like to say, you know, I ain't got a lot of money because I give it all away in different missions and stuff like that. Since I left Ingalls, left the shipyard, and I'm doing lawn care full time and we we better off financially, our relationship really have grown. And I think uh, it's grown a lot because of the uh, financial pressure that was on us. That pressure financially that was on us has been lifted off of us. So, man, I, I just I just want to encourage people, man, like we, we have to get our lives together all the way around for everything to just start falling in line, because for us. Uh, how we ended up in front of that courthouse, it was number one, we was new. Neither one of us was raised knowing how to properly love in a marriage or nothing like that anyway. Neither one of us was taught about really nothing for real. So we was blind in the financial pressure. Then here I am working a lot. Then here we are with a, a new new child and we young. So it was just a lot of pressure, Paul, that, that put us, man, in front of that courthouse. But I'm so glad, man, that we we looked at each other. <laughs> I, I knew she didn't want to uh, go in there. She knew I didn't want to go in there. And I'm so glad that we turned around that day. And uh, actually, in September, September 29th, man, we'll be celebrating 10 years. We'll be celebrating 10 years of marriage, man. We're going to renew our vows because it's it's well needed. And then we're going to Tennessee, man. We're going to go to uh, Pigeon Forge and to the Smoky Mountains for about a week. So, we're going to go and have a good time, man. So I'm, I'm glad, man, and that's a blessing. But what, what to answer your question, Paul, what uh, brought us in front of the courthouse that day, it was just all kind of pressure from all around, man, all kind of different pressures. So, but like she said, man, we on the up and up now. So, and I, I pray to God that it just continue to get better from here and we just continue to learn and grow together.